Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. I'm talking to Wyatt Welchy and Ben Ham. They're the uh, the guys that own the shopping center in uh, in Madison that is bringing roses. Tractor Supply is already there, uh, and we're talking about Madison Shopping Plaza that. Uh, Formerly, uh, Kmart was located there, uh, but they're on the line now because we want to get an update on all the good things happening at Madison Shopping Plaza. So, hey, Wyatt and Ben, how you doing? We're doing good. Good, good. Thanks for having us on. We appreciate it. Well, I know you have a real passion. This is your job for uh, for what you do in real estate and, and taking shopping centers that need a helping hand. And it looks like you've, uh, you've really given a boost to the one in Madison. So tell us uh, what all you're doing. Yeah, we're, we're trying to. We, we bought the center uh, about a year and a half ago, um, obviously with the Kmart box empty and then a couple of other small shop spaces, medium shop spaces empty. Uh, we bought it because we had a good relationship previously with Kmart and, and looking at the sales that Kmart was doing here, they were topping out around $9.5, $9.8 million. So our thought process was, hey, if Kmart closing year was doing about that, it makes sense that we could try to convince another retailer to come in here and make up for all that money that was walking out of the county and walking out of the city uh, to other areas. Uh, so we were able to convince Roses to reopen the store in Madison, which is exciting uh, for us, and then also uh, opening a store for Half Price Bargains, which is a chain of overstock discount stores, more like a liquidation model. And that's going to be their first store in North Carolina. So both those retailers were really impressed with Madison and really impressed with the store sales that Kmart was doing in the shopping center in general. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we're excited to be redeveloping a center in Madison. Well, and you said reopen there for Roses, but for those that don't know, there was a connection there already. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There was a Maxway store, which Roses owned uh, in the Food Lion Center many years ago. Much smaller store obviously an older store. This is going to be one of Rose's uh, newest model, brand new concrete floors, LED lighting, and a huge store, you know, 50, 60,000 square feet. It's going to be, you know, almost triple the size of what that Maxway store was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And opening first quarter that I've talked to Rose's corporate and that's uh, kind of the, the time frame they give me first quarter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And with, I mean, with coronavirus, it's, it's, it's a real pat on the back to Madison in general to see, hey, a lot of retail out there is struggling. A lot of retail is changing, but y'all are getting business. You got one, two nationals, and then a third with Dollar Tree coming into the people space that went bankrupt, plus some local business that's opening that I'm sure you want to talk about as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need to mention Dollar Tree for sure, because how exciting is that? Uh, people love Dollar Tree, don't they? <laughs> I mean, necessity retail never goes anywhere. You know, we've got a Dollar Tree up in Mayden, not but 15 minutes away, but uh, this will be a good boost to people who don't want to drive up there uh, and also just uh, able to stop in while they're shopping at other businesses and get what they need. So, yeah, I mean, it's a real it's a real testament to the y'all community in general that, uh, you know, hey, y'all are thriving and growing during coronavirus when a lot of communities aren't. So it's, uh, you know, your own economy that y'all should be proud of. Yeah, well, there's some good things happening uh, countywide for sure, with new businesses opening and some small mom-and-pop shops. Uh, dozens of those have opened here over the summer uh, uh, all around the county. And uh, and then we have bringing these national chains um, to regional chains to, uh, to Madison. Uh, that is so cool. Let's go through, uh, Wyatt and Ben, kind of the um, – the the list of tenants. Who do we have? And I know you've just signed some that I don't even know about. So I'm going to take notes and write them all down. So we've got obviously roses. We've got half price bargains. So those are the two converting to Kmart. We've got Dollar Tree. We have Scoops, which is Ronnie and Junie. They've been there for years. Have that successful restaurant. They actually expanded and opened an ice cream store there. Mm-hmm. Then we've got Bake Me Happy, and we have recently Vincent's Marketplace who is uh, kind of doing furniture and general merchandise. And then also uh, Subway, Dove Medical Supply, Tractor Supply. Um, yeah, it's a whole mix of retail from necessity to, you know, drive through cupcakes. So there's really anything that you could get at the center you would want. Yeah. 
Well, you had me right there at drive through cupcake. So let's talk about <laughs> a, uh, a, a downtown Madison business that uh, just in the last year and a half or so had, had moved down the street, and now they're moving again. And how exciting we are, how excited we are that they're coming to your shopping center and with a drive through right there on the corner. That was originally when that center opened, as, uh, as a lot of people remember, it was Doctor's Vision Center. They've gone through a change. They built a freestanding building right in front of the, the shopping center. But um, So Bake Me Happy is uh, having their grand opening tomorrow, 11 to 9, with that drive through And I'm excited, too, that their regular hours are every day, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. How cool is that? Yes, sir, it is. I mean, look, coronavirus took a, took a weird turn for, for everybody, but it's businesses like that that are able to adapt and say, hey, we have a bakery. We know how to make cakes. We know how to make breads. We know how to make cupcakes. And we're not only going to take a risk uh, and open a new business, but we're going to open a drive through as well, mm-hmm. which is, you know, even safer and a good way to handle this, this change in 2020 that we've had. So we're really impressed with them and excited to have them as kind of a highlight of the end of the shopping center right there up close to the road. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So um, some of the uh, businesses you mentioned, of course, are, as we know, are open. Uh, do we have some timelines on some of the ones that you just uh, told us about? Yeah, I'd say everything's happening early of next year. Uh, I think you'd spoken to Rose's Corporate. They're telling us that uh, Q1 of next year uh, is when it's happening. Half Price Bargains uh, is along the same timeline. As soon as Rose's open, they'll be open shortly after that. Uh, Dollar Tree's already in their space uh, doing construction, so uh, I think they're trying to time it in conjunction with Rose's, and then of course with Bake Me Happy opening tomorrow, like you said, from 11 to 9, uh, they're already opening by the time this gets out there anyway. So mm-hmm. uh, most of those businesses will be open in the next three months, I would say. Yeah, okay. What do you look for? I know every city, every shopping center, every market is different. This is a nice shopping center to start with. You know, you see, unfortunately, uh, we have some in the county that are just, uh, you know, in terrible shape. And you think they just probably need to be bulldozed down. But you you bought this, you said, a year and a half ago, and it was already a nice-looking center, just needed to fill in some holes. But what do you look for, and, and what kind of mix with tenants? Yeah, necessity retail is great. We love working with Tractor Supply because they drive a lot of traffic. We love having a mix of tenants, a mix of restaurants and necessity retail. And we love empty space uh, because empty space is an opportunity for us. So if there's a center that's empty, uh, a center that is even run down for one reason or another, we like those. This was one of the better options for us uh, because, you know, like you said, before we got our hands on it, it was thriving. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the Kmart box, most everybody that we talked about was there already. So uh, it's great center, great market. And population is not that important to us. Population density is not that important to us. But uh, Madison checked all those boxes with the amount of money flowing through the city and flowing through the county. Uh, It just made a lot of sense for us to try to bring some more national retail uh, back into the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I've always heard, you know, you you put the the spot there where the center is or the business and you – you draw a big circle around it, perhaps. What do I know? I don't know real estate. but And you look at, you know, what kind of population and shopping potential is in that particular market. So what are we looking at? You, you know, drawing from what, what area? I know you said really the, the numbers, they are not that important, but really some other criteria. So what, what do you look at as how many people in a market to serve? I mean, we're a little... There are more sophisticated guys out there than, than uh, myself and Wyatt who are doing all kinds of models and analysis. All we look at is how much money is being spent at this shopping center and how much money is in maybe a 20, 30-minute drive radius. Okay. Uh, so, for example, like we were saying, when Kmart closed, they were doing over $9 million a year. Uh, so them closing this location and closing in general was not a reflection of Madison. It was a reflection of our business as a whole. Uh, we have good relationships with Tractor Supply. We know how well they're doing. Obviously, with Dollar Tree opening a new store here, they're 
doing gangbusters over in Mayaden, uh, not 15 minutes up the road, and so it made sense for them to have another site here. And then Roses forecasted their model, and they said they'll probably do around $3 million a year. So we leave it up to the much smarter retailers and much smarter people to run their models. Uh, for us, it's really more just do we drive the area and feel like there's money flowing here, uh, and is the actual numbers from retailers justifying that? So if the retailers are saying, hey, we're cranking out X, Y, Z, it makes sense that we can convince another retailer to join them side by side because if Tractor Supply doing awesome, then it makes sense that Roses will do awesome. Mm-hmm. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, i got to tell you that. Why it's much more smart, much more intelligent than I am on that. And he'll run all these models, but uh, for me it's just more of a, a gut feeling and, uh, you know, if one retailer tells me they're killing it, then we trust them and we try to convince somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned Dollar Tree a couple of times. That Dollar Tree store is actually 15 minutes away in Eden. So uh, uh, the Dollar Tree in Eden uh, is always busy. Now, what does that do when you open, uh, for instance, their, their Dollar General's opening on every corner? You know, what what does that do? Do you, do you pull from other stores or how does that work? People worry about that or not? Yeah, the dollar stores compete with each other. Uh, they don't compete with uh, uh, local business much, in in my opinion, because there's not a lot of local uh, dollar stores that you see. Um, what they are bringing is jobs. Uh, so from a competition perspective, I don't think they're competing much with local business, but what they do bring is a tremendous amount of job opportunities. So Roses has to hire a full staff. Half Price Bargains has to hire a full staff. Dollar Tree has to hire a full staff. So we use those nationals to draw traffic, and then we boost the local economy specifically by adding local businesses in there, like Bake Me Happy uh, or like keeping the Mexican restaurant long term or like even the Vincent's Marketplace that Wyatt talked about earlier. They, I mean, they just signed their lease. It's a, a little, uh, you know, discount to consignment furniture store uh, that's opening, and it's just a young couple in their 20s taking a risk but they're going to benefit off all that traffic, and so their family is going to be benefited off of that, and the the local economy is going to be benefited through the jobs. And the competition, so to speak, like you touched on, I don't think it totally plays into effect because these dollar stores are not necessarily competing with any local businesses in the area. Uh, It's more just coming alongside those local businesses and driving traffic to the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you make such a good point there, too, when you have some big anchors and then even the local businesses. Uh, they all kind of play off each other, and everybody bene- it's a win-win. Everybody benefits. Exactly. And we try to keep our rent uh, super competitive and as cheap as possible for local people. We do free rent. We do you know construction budgets for them. We'll, we'll give them time to build it out. That's part of the reason why Bake Me Happy chose this site is because they said, we'll take a risk, and we said, great. Y'all take a risk. We'll take a risk by giving y'all a period of free rent to, to make that happen. I got to tell you, with the Nationals, Wyatt puts his uh, boxing gloves on and, and doesn't uh, it doesn't be as, he's not as nice with them. He'll he'll punch them hard and try to get as much uh, rent out of them because they can afford it. But with locals, we really try to keep it as cheap as possible so that they can benefit from the traffic in the big space. I haven't been in their shop hoping to get in tomorrow, but I've seen the Facebook pictures. That is absolutely beautiful to see uh, what they are bringing from the downtown area to the shopping center. Well, we've got uh, just about a minute left. Uh, Anything in particular to to close up, guys, Wyatt and Ben? I don't think that there's really anything else other than, you know, if people have opportunities, bring them to us. We are always looking to buy, and we want to continue to, you know, bring value to these communities. We love these communities around the country and, uh, you know, want to help them grow because it's a passion for us. We love the retail. We love to improve the shopping centers. But seeing these, you know, mom and pops thrive and continue to grow and to see these businesses come to life, it's, you know, truly fascinating. Sure. Well, I certainly appreciate your passion for what you do and for uh, for breathing new life into uh, Madison Shopping Center, bringing the new businesses for us to enjoy. Uh, thank you for that, your, your hard work, and uh, for making it happen in Madison and here in western Rockingham County. We all appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for uh, giving us some time to do an interview. This is this is cool. Most people don't really care too much about commercial real estate usually, so this is really exciting for us. Thanks for your time. Glad to do it. We'll talk again perhaps. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, I wanted you to hear from the uh, owners of Madison Shopping Plaza, 
That's Wyatt Welchy and Ben Ham there with Brookwood Capital Advisors in Nashville, Tennessee. Please support all the good things happening at Madison Shopping Plaza.